Hello, welcome to Clickbait. I am Matt and this is a Nikon Z6 II and this is a Canon R6. Now, the question is, especially for people coming from DSLR or from Nikon, is it really that much of a difference in terms of quality of speed of use and focusing of a Canon R6 over the Nikon Z series? As a long time Nikon user, it was a natural progression for me to jump from a DSLR Nikon to a Z system Nikon. It seemed like the obvious thing to do was to keep on using my old lenses. Now obviously the original Nikon Z6, the focusing was pretty terrible. We can all admit that. Then the Z6 II came along and with its dual X-Speed processors, apparently it was significantly better. And yes, the focusing systems have come on a long way. But if you listen to the reviewers and a lot of the uh, YouTube pundits, they will tell you that the Canon R6 and R5 absolutely walk all over this thing and it is useless. Now, in use, I have found some limitations. Following moving subjects in video and panning photography, like fast action photos have been an issue with this. So I'll use this camera in comparison and see if there's much of a difference and does it live up to the hype. And I'll say at the outset, I don't want to change my system. I like the Nikon stuff, so I'm hoping it's all just YouTube hype. On paper, these are both very similar. They're both new format lens mounts, which are much bigger than previous, so they've got lots more scope for the future. They're full frame sensors with low 20s, uh, file size for stills, 21 versus 24. They both have pretty fast burst rates. They can both buffer a long time, real world more than long enough. And with adapters, they can both use the old legacy lenses from the Nikon F and the Canon EF mount systems. Right now, you're looking at the picture from both cameras. Canon is on one side, Nikon is on the other. Can you tell which is which? Now this is the first thing I've come across using when comparing the Canon R system and the Nikon Z system. That is the color rendition. People always say Nikon have got the best colors out of all of the big manufacturers and I'm inclined to agree to be honest. Can you tell which is which? I'll give you three. Have a little look. Is one more saturated? Is one more flat? Is one more dull? This is uh, the basic movie file straight from the camera so it's not been modified so it gives you a fair and accurate representation okay that one is the Nikon that one is the Canon did you guess that personally I prefer the Nikon so already that's score one for the Nikon but it's not just about colors because we can I guess correct that in post the other thing that's very similar for these cameras is the price point they're both sitting around the 2000 pound or dollar mark there is of course a third contender the Sony a7R mark 3 which is very similar price 2200 pounds but that's got a 42 megapixel sensor and does all the same things that the Canon and the Nikon do as well but the Sony is a more established system of mirrorless so today we're really looking at more the Canon and the Nikon as a new emerging mirrorless full-frame systems now comparing these two cameras because they are apples and apples they're both low 20s megapixels 21 for the Canon 24 for the Nikon they're both full frame they're both a new larger lens mount and a new camera system and the big thing which people have been loving about the Canon is its focus which is the thing which has been letting the Nikon down now both the cameras you're watching on right now are recording at 1080 25 frames a second and they are both using the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 native lenses so this is as fair a comparison as you can possibly hope for. They're also both set to look for my eyes and to track me. So if I start moving towards the camera, do they both follow equally? If I move left to right diagonally, is there a difference? Because I have noticed when I've been doing blog videos, the Nikon often seems to drop me. It's great when I'm looking at my face, but as soon as I look away, it starts to drift. If there's something closer to the camera, it will default to the closest thing to the camera. The Canon, on the other hand, seems to go for more midpoint further away. So hang on, let's have another test. If I turn around and now walk backwards, are they still focusing on me? Which one wins? Well, I can't tell you yet because I haven't seen the footage. Clearly, it was the Canon. So I took them both to the noisiest roundabout I could find, armed with a pair of 70 to 200 f2.8s and up the shutter speed to 1 400th of a second, faster than I'd normally use for panning shots of cars. The Canon immediately showed how good it is at this kind of thing, grabbing the front of the car, locking on and following. Not every one was perfect though. It completely missed the MX-5 and never found it at all until the last frame. But then it was back to solid hits.
even when the Mini goes behind the signs, it still manages to follow it. But then I found that rear wheel set to exposure compensation managed to get in the way and mess up the exposures on the BMW. The Nikon's eye and face tracking have already proved themselves, but they instantly showed their shortcomings on these fast moving cars. Sometimes it did okay, but not always. In the first shot of the Mercedes, the grille is sharp, but as it gets closer, that focus point moves further back down the length of the car, first on the wheel arch, then the mirror, the door handles, and the rear light by the time the car is side on. Given the Z62 a second chance later on, it proved that it could cope with things that were further away, so not moving as fast in terms of focus, but with closer subjects that moving more rapidly, it failed again. Then we had help from Mike, who was happy to run at me over and over again. Animal eye and face detect worked well on both cameras. The R6 grabbed the eye and hung onto it frame after frame. The Z6 sometimes worked okay, but other times it was just following behind the dog again. It could never quite keep up and get in front of the animal. Now something I do seem to do a lot of is video the interiors of cars. With the Nikon, quite often it takes a little bit of a delay for it to realise it needs to refocus. And occasionally even has to have the auto button pushed just to, to remind it to wake up. It is actually behaving itself very well. Uh, unfortunately I'm not recording the background but it currently thinks that that air vent is a human eye, it's back focusing on that. So I need to go and intervene and choose a focus point nearer the camera so I can now focus on the gear shift. I think it's too close for lens. It is now tracking the gear shift quite effectively. It's keeping a little yellow box around that at all times as I move the camera around. Let's give the Canon a try. Okay, I've come indoors because it's just getting too hot outside. Now, the differences are fewer than you might think between these two cameras. The size, the form factor is virtually the same. If you're used to a DSLR, this might feel a bit small for you. The Nikon is actually a little bit smaller than the uh, Canon, but only marginally. If you're trying to pack things into a very small space, maybe this is an issue, maybe it's not. If you have a larger hand, the Canon may suit you better or the Nikon's slightly deeper feeling grip is I think a bit more comfortable to hold. The Nikon also feels more solid, they both feel very well built but the Nikon has got a real chunky old time metal feeling about it whereas this has got more of a plasticky um, feel to it. 
Now, outside of how the autofocus and the exposure systems work, the big difference is the control systems and how you actually access the cameras. I've been using Nikon cameras as my main bodies for a long time, and so moving over to the Z system was absolutely no problem whatsoever. The things I like about this camera are the fact there's a top screen. So at a quick glance down, you can see straight away what the camera is set to. You don't have to look at the viewfinder, you don't have to wake up the screen. It's all just there for you to see immediately. It's really useful. Secondly, you've got this big dial on the left. Aperture, shutter, manual program, those are the basics that we're using most of the time, and they're all just there, simple and easy to use. Also presenting itself nice and easy to use is the on-off switch around the shutter button. So say something happens and you need to take a picture in a hurry, you pick up the camera, flick the switch, hit the button. It's as simple as that. With the Canon, the on-off switch is over here on the left-hand side, so it becomes a two-handed operation, which is a bit less convenient. Now the third thing I really like about the Nikon is this mode switch on the back. Stills to video at the flick of a switch. And this means you can have the camera preset. So, so most professionals these days have found themselves being hybrid shooters. So you're on a shoot doing stills and you've got to jump into doing video as well. And that means you can have the camera set up completely differently in video mode to still mode, flick the switch and you go back from one to the other. So different ISO, different shutter speed, different uh, focusing and all kinds of every setting the camera has on this switch and it basically it's two cameras in one thanks to that one control which is very very useful indeed next up is the menus the menu system is very simple and very intuitive even a first timer can navigate there around here without too much difficulty and find what you're looking for it's fairly self-explanatory as you shuffle through it's a touch screen and it's a good touch screen as well it's also higher resolution than the canons and so is the viewfinder now this is one massive uh, bone of contention which people are either going to love or hate and there's no definitive answer. This is the fold-out screen. The Nikon does not have a flippy screen, it has a foldy screen. Now I'm filming myself on my own right now. With a flippy out screen I can just rotate that around and I can see exactly what I can see through the camera and I can also control that on the touch screen as well, which is massively advantageous if you're filming yourself. Um, I've done it a few times this week already. I've been filming myself doing car reviews, and so putting this in the back of the car on a mount, I can just glance back at the camera, see if I'm in frame, see if I'm in focus, see if the red recording tally light is flashing or not, so I'm not gonna miss a shot, which is very useful indeed. The Nikon, you can't do that. You have to walk around the back of the camera and see what it's up to. Also, there's no tally light on the front of the camera. When the camera is recording, you can't see if it's actually recording or not, which is very annoying. And on this particular Z6 II, it seems to have an issue with recording interrupted sometimes. I, people say it's the card, but I've tried multiple cards and it still keeps on doing it. So I don't know what that is so I don't know if the camera has suddenly stopped recording if I'm videoing myself. However, this has the more limited fold-out screen, which people who are advocates of the flippy out screen will say is very limited. And I thought using the Canon R6, I was gonna absolutely love this because I can just rotate it to any position I want it to. I can see exactly where I'm going. Turns out I actually kind of hate it in every situation apart from filming myself because you wanna look down on a subject, fold the screen out and you are there. And these have a sensor in them, so the moment you fold the screen out, it defaults to display to the screen, turns the viewfinder off, which is really handy. The flippy out screen, on, by contrast though, is actually really quite annoying. So say you've got the screen on the back of the camera, so you're shooting away quite happily, you wanna go and do a looking up or a looking down photo, you can't just flip it out, you have to rotate it out. Oh, because it's been on the back of the screen to be used as a screen on the back of the camera, it's now facing the wrong way, so you have to rotate it all the way around again. Then you can rotate it to where you want it to be, which is actually quite slow and quite time consuming. If you're working fast, if you're doing news, reportage, any kind of shoot where things are happening in a hurry, that kind of delay is actually quite annoying. So unless you're shooting with it like that all the time, where it's liable to get knocked off and damaged, it's actually a bit of a liability, which really surprised me. So what else is good or bad about the Canon? Well, um, when I first picked this up, I assumed to go video, I had to move it into the video mode on the dial. Turns out that's actually quite limiting. That is like program only video. It's pretty simple. What you can however do in program, shutter, aperture, manual, just have it set up how you want it, hit the record button and you're recording straight away. However, if you wanna flip back from a still shot to a video shot and vice versa, it means your settings are the same. Say for example, you're using studio flash and your white balance is set completely different for the stills as it is to the video, then you're gonna have to quickly change all the white balance settings, which is, again, a little bit slower and a little bit more annoying. Um, again, another tick for the Nikon for speed of use. 
In terms of controls and adaptability, the Canon does have the advantage that there are lots and lots of buttons that do many, many things all around it. We've got about four more buttons on the back and the top of the Canon over the Nikon. They will come preset with controls, but they can all be overridden and changed in the menus. And the menus on this camera just go on and on and on. It's kind of dumbfounding going through them sometimes and actually slightly annoying that some of the settings like changing from animal to human to no AF tracking priority on the Nikon hit the I button and then a screen comes up instantly and you can just tap it. On the Canon you have to hit menu then a sub menu then a sub menu which is a little bit slower and a little bit more annoying. Now something I've never really got the hang of over years and years ever since the original um, EOS DSLRs is the uh, the rear mounted aperture. This is all customizable though because I've always felt much more at home having aperture on the front wheel, shutter on the rear wheel and then ISO somewhere else completely. So I have been configuring this to use the R6 in that exact way so I'm more comfortable having aperture and shutter as it would be with an aperture on a lens for example. However having configured the uh, exposure compensation to the back wheel I keep finding I'm nudging that with my thumb on my nose and I'm changing the exposure compensation and wondering why I'm suddenly under or overexposed in a shot and it's because I've been knocking that and it seems that not every mode will hold those customizations so I move it so in manual or aperture priority, this front wheel is my aperture. Move it into shutter priority, this becomes the shutter speed, which is a little bit off-putting. Now open the side doors, and both of these cameras do now have twin slots. The Canon has a pair of the same, they're both standard size SD slots, so you're never gonna get caught out if you run out of memory and you, or you forget your cards even on a shoot. You can find these pretty much anywhere in the world. Supermarkets, petrol stations, you name it, you can find an SD card pretty much lying in the street and carry on shooting. They're both the same, but I do wonder if this is a limitation of speed perhaps, although looking at the performance figures, perhaps it isn't. One weird limitation I have found with this camera is that when that door is open, you can't do anything else. It locks the camera completely. So you, you can't charge it, you can't review photos, you can't take photos. So that door has to be shut all the time. The Nikon has gone a little bit more exotic. It has two slots, but they're not the same. One is an SD, so you do have that backup of being able to find an SD card anywhere in the street. However, the main card is this though, XQD or same form factor, CF Express, which is significantly faster. Now Nikon say you don't need to be shooting redundant because these cards are so reliable, they never go wrong. So you don't need to worry about them being backed up onto a redundant card. And something that you need to bear in mind is if you are shooting redundant, the buffer speed on the XQD is significantly faster than on the standard SD. So the SD card will become a bottleneck if you're trying to shoot parallel to both cards. Whereas on the Canon, it's shooting at the same speed all the time, so that's never gonna be an issue. Now something else to look at is the batteries. Uh, DSLR batteries last a lot longer than mirrorless batteries. It's the nature of the beast. They're virtually the same size. The Nikon's is wider, the Canon's is taller. They're both 16 watt hours. The Canon is 2130 milliamps and the Nikon is 2280 milliamps. And what I've found though, is that the Canon runs down faster than the Nikon. Whichever system you go with, you're gonna be wanting a few spare batteries. Now, both of these cameras are wearing their respective manufacturer's native 24-70 f2.8 set at 35 millimeters. And you'll notice there's a bit of a difference in the actual size of the, the frame you're looking at, despite the fact they're both 35 millimeters, which is a little bit odd. Now, I've set them both to their respective face tracking, full-time focus uh, equivalents. And the Canon is in video mode because that gives you full program, in fact, you're limited to full program. The Nikon is in video mode and set into P mode, so it's kind of mirroring the same thing rather than aperture priority, so as, as close as we can. Now, let's move around. Getting close to the camera, moving back away from the camera. Stepping off the frame. Moving into the frame. Is it following me? Does it need assistance from a person behind the camera? Or does it actually follow the person in front? Am I in focus still? Getting close to the camera, moving back away from the camera. Stepping off the frame, moving into the frame. Is it following me? Does it need assistance from a person behind the camera? 
or does it actually follow the person in front? Am I in focus still? So, what's my conclusion after a full week of using the Nikon and the Canon side by side on actual photo shoots, which obviously I can't show you because they are for clients, and just randomly standing beside roads and taking pictures of the traffic, what do I think of the two cameras? Well, as I'm a long time Nikon user, it's no surprise, I do think the Nikon menu system is more simple and I think their layout of controls is more logical as well. Um, but I think even if I wasn't a Nikon user, if I was coming from Pentax, Fuji, Olympus, Sony even, I think I would find the Nikon controls more logical, more sensible. And the top panel giving you the information readout all the time is also invaluable. A number of times I've gone down to glance at this camera when it's been either on the ground, really low shooting, or on a tripod and it hasn't been there. So I've had to go and look at the back of the camera. So yeah, on that respect, I do think the Nikon is better. I also think that for its color science, the ability to reproduce lifelike, pleasing colors, the Nikon has got it licked. The cow, the colors from the Nikon are just the best of, of any brand, frankly. And then forget Sony, that's just unpleasant. Canon's good, but not Nikon good. Then we've got the issue of focus. This is the reason why I ran this entire test in the first place, because people keep saying the Nikon focus is terrible, the Canon focus is beyond psychic. It knows what you're gonna photograph before you even lifted the camera to your eye. Well, in practice, shooting stills, the eye tracking or find a person's eye just like that with the Nikon, in some cases is actually faster than the Canon to acquire the person's eye. Then it comes to the tracking. The tracking is good on the Nikon. It's 90% there, whereas the Canon is 99% there. There's not a lot in it, especially when you're shooting stills, the face and eye tracking, even on animals, seems really good. What is lacking in the Nikon though, where the Canon does have the edge, is the ability to keep locked onto that subject and keep it in focus when it's moving. Shooting moving vehicles, fast subjects, so this could be sports, it could be animals like horse racing, or it could be motorsport. This is good enough to use for panning photos and sport photos quite happily, whereas the Z just isn't. And also what I found, the other thing I've struggled with and I've been working, is the ability to follow things, to lock on and follow, and find the right thing to focus on when doing video. Not necessarily faces, but just when you're in a moving environment, when you're walking with the camera, for example, blogging and vlogging, that kind of stuff. The Nikon just drifts off focus too much, whereas the Canon finds its subject more quickly. Yeah, I think the Nikon is better in terms of actual usage, but the Canon is definitely better in terms of focus. Now, would I trade my Nikon system, move into the Canon system? I'm kind of unsure. I almost feel like I need the Nikon for most of my still photography and the Canon for video and some still work. If Nikon raised their game on the focus, there would be no question that the Nikon would be the one to go for. And if it wasn't for the fact that the focus is just a bit lacking when it comes to tracking stuff, fast action things that you just can't keep up at all, then the Nikon would have it absolutely nailed because the Canon is great, but the interface isn't as nice. Also, there are the lenses as well to talk about. Both manufacturers have got a great range of things expanding all the time. So these are both the native 24-70 f2.8. They're very similar in size and weight, so they're a fairly comparable thing. They're both lightning fast focus, so as crisp as you like. Nothing you can fool with them. If you want to go down a grade, you've got the f4 versions from Canon here. I haven't got the Nikon ones here, but these are the f4 24-105. But that gives you a little bit more range, but not quite as fast an aperture. Then you've got the 70 to 200 f4 which is significantly smaller and lighter that's only the lens that just there than the f2.8 and a lot cheaper as well something i'd absolutely love about this f2.8 70 to 200 is this little slider here so if you've got a polarizer on there you can get your finger in there and rotate it which is not something i've seen on the nikon something i don't like about it is the fact that it does rotate out far too easily so you have to use the lock switch on the side of it also, despite the fact it will slide out on its own quite easily, it's not quite light enough to one touch it with a finger or one finger move it. Whereas the thing with the Nikon, although this is an F mount on a Z adapter, the Z lens is virtually the same form factor. I actually kind of think I prefer the shorter, dumpier Canon, to be honest. It does mean it'll fit into bags more easily. But this is so smooth and light. So as you swing the lens, 
your finger stays put and it changes the uh, the focal distance to go from 200 to well, 100 or 70 which is a brilliant I don't know, I doubt it's intentional but it just works that way so ultimately my conclusion is probably the Canon is the better one in terms of function the Nikon is the better one in terms of being used by the person so I guess it depends how much of the automation you want. If I wasn't worried about the autofocus on the tracking, the Nikon would be the one to go for. With focus tracking being something I kind of need, I guess I feel like I'm gonna to have to be a, a traitor to Nikon and get myself a, an R6. I hope this has been in some way interesting, possibly even informative. If it has, then please do hit the subscribe button down below and join me again next time. Thanks for watching.